just a little stretch across along the road and back onto snow again and this is why I want to get out today while it was still while all this snow is still on the trees it's very atmospheric with this uh, cloud that's come down as well. Everything's so still. It's beautiful. I'm at the start of the West Loman Path, which is a couple of miles it goes from here all the way up to the top of West Lowen, which is the highest point, point in Fife. Um, someone's been here before me, someone's some tracks here. Looks like they've set out this morning. Uh, it just occurred to me that when they set out, and indeed when I set out about 90 minutes ago, it was um, clear. There was no hint of cloud or fog. Um, and I suppose you really could be taken unawares if you were out. It's just all just a big sort of plateau of heathland and moorland. Uh, you could set out in good conditions and then all this could come down. This claggy, misty, murky stuff. Uh, you could quite easily just suddenly find yourself two miles from the car and no, out on the heathland and not really knowing where you are. You've only got your footprints, I guess, to follow on your way back, but there's no guarantee that the footprints you find are going to be yours. Um, that's why, you know, even, even in hills like this, small hills, local hills to most people, that's why it's so important to always know where you are and be sure you can navigate your way out of these problems because this is about as bad as it gets in terms of being able to see where you're going. I am not going up West Loman. Not today anyway, I was going to if it was clear. Um, I think it's a day to stay in the forests actually while they've still got the snow. So I'm heading off in that direction, which looks like nothing. But eventually I will come to the forest line. Oh, what do you reckon? Trees appearing. That's essentially how I'm navigating at the moment. I've got a GPS, an ancient GPS in my bag that's always there in case I ever need it. And I've got my map, my compass, so I know I can get myself out of trouble if I encountered it. But because I know the hills fairly well and I know that these defining linear features are here like fences and tree edges, for the moment, that's adequate for me to find my way around. Find the edge of the forest, go along the side, and you know you're going to get to this style. With deer prints, by the looks of it. It's just so still. Ooh, I can hear a grouse. It's just a shame the sun's not out in a way. I can see there's blue sky up there just. But this fog is just being a bit stubborn at the moment. But this is why I wanted to get out today, is because I wanted to see the trees looking like this, which is just a picture postcard, isn't it? It's like being in the. It feels like I'm being in in the wilds of Canada or something. I love these forest tracks around the. This is the top of the Falkland Estate. You don't tend to see anybody up here. It's very very quiet, very still. 
on a day like today, that's perfect. I can see a plane. So there is blue sky up there. There is uh, the fact that somebody's flying up there shows that it, this fog is actually very, very low. I'm just I'm quite happy to stay out for the next couple of hours while it's still light. On the off chance the sun might come out, but um, even if it doesn't, this is so atmospheric. Can't get over this scene. It's beautiful. It's almost better with the cloud. So still. All around me I can just hear the occasional sound of snow falling to the ground as some of this stuff comes off these pines. I suppose that's a saving grace that it hasn't been sunny. Is it? If this had had a morning of sun on it, then it probably would have all... Well, not all, but a lot of it would have come off by now. It's actually quite odd. I'm finding... I'm, I could be speeding through here, even though the snow's quite deep. But I'm just sort of creeping. It just feels something to savour. Uh, just, <laughs> just don't want to rush through. It's just, it's, it's amazing. What's quite interesting is that usually, wonderful as these forest tracks are, and you know, they're very quiet and nobody really comes here, they are, as conifer plantations typically are, quite dark, foreboding places a lot of the time. Uh, there's not really anything living in these places, they're very quiet and uh, they feel a bit dead, feel a bit, feel a bit sterile. But on a day like today, with the snow down, they just have a completely different appearance. It's still still, and it's still sort of dead. But that works perfectly with all this snow. <laughs> can't quite get over it. I think as I've got older and I've spent more time in the hills, I've... I think I've started to appreciate the subtleties of what our country has to offer us. Usually, the snow comes down, I just head for the high places, the open hillsides, but in recent years I've come to appreciate a forest walk, which I didn't used to do. And now I have them on my doorstep. I realise what I've been missing out on all these years. cars on the roads maybe over by Glenrothes but apart from that there's no sound at all every now and then though you hear the shifting of snow, and it's just snow falling off these trees. But just tiniest bit of my head, tiniest piece of my mind is sort of thinking, oh, savage beast about to kill me. 
because we don't have any of them in Scotland. We killed them all. Although, there are reports in the Lomond Hills and Fife generally of a puma, sort of a big black cat out on the hills. And I think maybe part of me would like to believe that. But then <laughs> it would make a it would make for an interesting trip if you knew that it was out here. And all that shifting around that you could hear in deep in those forests was in fact a cat stalking you.